So those people who receive this information of riba, slandering, talking, and that they will eventually see it as something insignificant, something minor. That there was once upon a time that they, maybe the first or second time, or you know, when they saw it as something big within their lives, that they said, you know, astaghfirullah. And they repented and they felt so sorry, they felt so bad. So they repented. Tawbah al nasuha you know, sincere advice, uh, sincere tawbah. Correct. Then maybe they went back to it again. The shaitan led them and distracted them and deceived them and they committed the haram for a second time. Will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept that tawbah from you a second time and you committed that sin again? Will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept that tawbah from you, yes or no? Yes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept that tawbah from you. If you are sincere and you do the tawbah correctly, if you go back to it and you do it a third time, will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from you? If you are sincere and your tawbah, you do it correctly, yes. The shaitan may know that, you know, the first few times you're going to repent. But he thinks that, you know, each time that that tawbah or the strength of your tawbah just becomes a little bit less. That you don't repent just like the first time. The second time it was like, astaghfirullah, a little bit less. And then a third time, you might say astaghfirullah, but you delay and you have less of a feeling for that. And then you commit the haram, you, you know, you're toing and froing, repenting to Allah and committing the haram, repenting, haram, repenting, haram, until the repentance is becoming weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker, until you think to yourself, you know what, I'm just saying astaghfirullah and I don't even mean it. I'm just saying it. Why should I say it? So then you commit the haram again, you think, I don't want to be hypocrite, I won't even say it. But the shaitan has led you all of that way, down the road. And this was his plan. This is the plan of the shaitan. But not the first time or the second time, no, that eventually that strength of that tawbah will become weak and eventually it's going to give it up. So it's important for you to know the plan of shaitan. That he might not get you the first time or the second time or the third time. But his plan is to get you at one time. But you should be aware of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has given us in terms of direction and guidance. But don't keep falling in that. Don't go to the same environment. Don't go to things which you know you can't protect yourself or help yourself. Just stay away from it. You're less likely to then commit that haram and put yourself in a compromising position where then maybe that tawbah becomes even weaker and then who knows what happens after that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that those people who say it by their mouths لَيْسَ لَكُمْ بِهِ عِلْمٍ Which is actually before what I was mentioning وَتَحْسَبُونُ هَا You know that they saw it as something insignificant. Before that do not say something لَيْسَ لَكُمْ بِهِ عِلْمٍ Something you don't even have knowledge of. Full, clear, accepted knowledge. Maybe you've heard part of a story. You heard bits and pieces about something. And then you put the rest. You added the rest. If that was placed in a, a court of law, or if you was to truly ask yourself those facts, can you have enough information about that person to really say that yaqeen and 100% that's the case? Probably most of the time, if not all the time, you say, no, I don't have the information, I don't have enough proof. However, however, I still told somebody, I still discussed it with somebody, I still slandered that person, I was still involved in backbiting. The fact is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibited that and made it haram, made a specific punishment for that. For that reason, for that reason, it is a tremendous matter, a very serious matter with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is one of the biggest diseases that spread amongst our ummah. And that is taking small bits of information and completing the story. Having little, little bits of information about so and so, Fulan, or Fulana, or Markaz Fulan, or Masjid Fulan, this Masjid or that Markaz, they hear this and they hear that. No time for them. 
We show no mercy to them. We don't make dua for them. Bel nadu'u alayhim. Rather, let's make dua against him. Qata Allahu lisana. May Allah cut his tongue. May Allah break his back. These ad'iya. Ya Rabbi. You hear one small piece of information that he is this or she is that. And you spread it. You confirm it. You never spoke to that person in your life. You never even saw them face to face in your life. However, you are the vehicle for carrying that. And you will face that on the Day of Judgment. For this reason, and I was just mentioning somebody today, that this disease is rotten and is deep within the hearts and souls of too many Muslims. Except, except whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had mercy upon. The rotten, filthy, evil disease of slandering and backbiting without any haqq. And that the shaitan, the devil, the, our enemy, will beautify that namima and ghiba and slandering and dua against you, will somehow justify it to you. That that person actually believes, so what, imagine, that person actually believes they're worshipping Allah. They're worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with namima and ghiba. That's the reality. If you ask them, maybe they'll roll off the ayat and they'll roll off the ahadith. They'll give you a dars on the dangers of namima and ghiba, backbiting and slandering. They'll give you a beautiful talk about the dangers of it. However, that the shaitan has beautified this matter somehow to them, they actually worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by slandering and backbiting people. It is haram, ma yujuz, haram. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibited for you to talk bad about the honor, al-ard, for any Muslim. And even though you may know something about them, does that what you know about them, and it has been fortified with witnesses and accounts and so on, does it then mean you have to then expose that individual? Is it right, is it correct to expose that individual? Is that the correct procedure? Or is it, no, let's speak to them. Ad-Din al-Nasiha. Is the religion of sincere advice. Is this what we do? No. That side of it will leave. We'll just take the other side and expose them, expose the, the weakness that they fell into, expose, expose the, an ignorance that they may have, and expose that to kullun all of people. 